Hello, welcome back to Bender Sushi Live Funding. In this episode, we're gonna be using um, Spreadshock add-on and Cycles um, in Blender. Um, and we're gonna kind of explore how we can kind of uh, experiment with a color ramp node and see what's actually going on. It's actually a, a pretty interesting setup. I don't know what this can be useful for. However, um, you can see how the setup is actually really, really clean. And maybe if you are like uh, teaching Python uh, or Python coding to someone who who is interested to code, you can actually uh, show them um, this setup because it's kind of more um, more visual in a way. So we know that, uh, so basically in the 3D scene, I have this uh, just a normal grid and I'm working in cycles, uh, cycles render and I'm using this material for this grid. Um, basically just a texture coordinate plug into gradient texture, which is a uh, linear, but can be also like radial or spherical, whatever. Um, um, and then it's plugged into this color ramp to, um, to make it more colorful instead of just a linear color, like a black and white. So this actually, the linear gradient goes inside the ramp and the ramp Usually you can give some colors and you can add up to, I don't know how many colors you can add. You can keep clicking here uh, to, ha to have more colors. And then it's plugged into the diffuse and then you get this color. So basically that's what it is. And then um, I'm thinking to drive these nodes, this color ramp, um, all this position, whatever, try to drive it uh, using Spreadshop. Uh, you can do this. Um, very very easily actually uh surprisingly easy and it's very clean as well uh, if you want to do it using python you you can definitely do that as well it's not not a problem so you let's uh, have a look inside the stretch of notes and see what's going on so basically i start with this object id selector this node can access any blocks of data in blender and I'm selecting currently selecting the materials and then the next one I have is object ID filter. It's filtering filtering the materials based on the name. So the name is material.001. So I got that so uh, I got that um, already filtered. So instead of two objects now we have a single object object one. And now we are accessing the material. So if we are using like python we can do it this way. bpy bpy data materials and then get the material name 001 and that's going to be our material i'm just going to put it inside a variable so i'm going to make this larger so i now if i type material it's actually bpy dot data materials material dot 001 which is basically this node and this node and now we're going to go deeper go inside the node tree because we are using the node tree so material node tree and i think that should give us the nodes oh okay so it's apparently like that material dot node tree there's an animation node that uh, that's we are not using here it's okay and then we're gonna go inside the nodes we can actually tell how many nodes we have so we have five nodes which is true one, two, three, four, five. We have five nodes, and one of the nodes is called uh, color ramp. So nodes, and we should be able to access the color ramp. So now this guy, the whole thing is color ramp. I can just access it that way. So in Spreadshop, you can do that visually using nodes like this, just chaining the object ID set up to the color ramp and then we want to um, access this attribute called color ramp so color ramp, um, color ramp has this attribute called special attribute called color ramp and this guy actually have elements if I check the number of elements I think we, we get seven because we have seven um, this, uh, what do you call it? Like a division or something? Uh, new color stop to the color band. Okay, so 
the color ramp is the color band and currently we have seven stop that's why it's giving you this uh the length is seven and that's actually what we have right here with a color ramp and then the, we accessing the elements and here you can see i'm using this um, bracket and then this colon this is a special like a python thing to uh to basically um, pack or unpack uh, values if you want to access every single one of the elements so i can show it to you here like if we pass this value of the elements of the color we're gonna get the data of each uh, element color like that if we, we if we unpack this value we're gonna see the value the actual value which is pretty interesting you know it's a uh, hard to explain otherwise so so right uh, i'll summarize again this one gets all the material this one filtering the materials by name and then this goes deeper into the material node 3 and we are selecting the node the color ram and the color ram um, attribute which is the color band here have uh, uh, for each element has things like the position and then the color the position here i'm i'm using this uh, range float between uh, Originally, it's between zero and one, and then we can give like how many counts of uh, stop here we have. We have seven, so we can really control the start and stop this way, you know, and get a different result. It's very interesting. I think I found it controlling nodes using nodes is very, very visual and very uh, interactive and real time. And for the color itself, I'm using just a random number size of seven. Random number give you, of course, this random value between zero and one. And that's why we get this. Of course, we can use uh, range float as well for the color. And we get like, we're gonna get rainbow color. Um, if you give it zero, uh, seven values between zero and one, going through the HSV will give you rainbow color. And you can set the start and the stop as usual as it goes the the circle of hsv hue it's gonna go back to red that's why you get this value and you can control the the value here saturations so all um all the nodes is already provided by spreadshop so it's it's a matter of how you access the the parameter or the attributes or the properties of a node i think in blender you call it properties but normally i always say either attributes or properties or parameter those three interchangeable so yeah the here again uh, position you can you can randomize the position like if you use like list shovel lift shovel or list shift is actually kind of interesting as well you can shift the list i believe this way see i'm you see here i'm shifting the color it's very strange that you can do that so easily and you can list shuffle of course it's shuffling just the data and put this to the value and shuffle and what else can you access here you can change this to other color mode but we don't need to do that um, let's say I don't know how many you can have here so I just click a couple of time I think we, we have like a limited number of color uh, stop we can have here I already hit the limit I think so oh okay 32 so now we have 32 color here and I will say 32 here as well I'm gonna tidy up this guy and tidy up this value real quick so 32 and this guy so that's actually kind of interesting it's kind of okay now it's updating properly and we have 32 and I can still control this start and stop uh, yeah like that I still have this gradient 32 gradient 
you can also repeat it you can see here what's going on it's like a multiple rainbow now because it's repeating it's very cool a lot of cool things you can find uh, when you're experimenting uh, using um, sphere chalk and then kind of try to control another nodes using this guy because this this will kind of uh, loop inside it and do some interesting thing so can randomize that we have 32 value here so yeah you can have this rainbow color or maybe something more subtle or maybe not to saturate it or play around with the saturations and you, you can get okay so that's how these things affecting the saturations and then you can also use it for the value and then for the alpha it's very cool and of course once you have this uh, crazy looking color ramp you can always uh, use it to map um, any kind of image for example and you're gonna get kind of interesting result so that's uh, uh, so yeah so that's how uh, you can um, kind of explore nodes and control nodes using another like another nodes I found this super interesting you, of course this can also like um, kind of like a key or like a like a bridge for you to learn to help you to learn um, how you can handle data using Python code if you like but I like doing this using nodes whenever so now whenever you need to do some crazy stuff like this to color ramp you can use this uh, node setup you can just bring in it bring in uh, into blender and then just do some kind of uh, randomization if you like this of course all can be coded if you like to do it with codes I think that's a little bit for more advanced some people like to uh, type it um, as a code and yes it's gonna be more efficient as uh, sometimes but I like doing it using nodes for now um, so yeah that's a quick look um, hopefully you find this useful let me know what you think if you have any comments feedbacks uh, you can just uh, let me know that the uh, on the comment section thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next video thank you bye